Hello, I am your resume reader, Crow Song, and today I will be reading to you from Handcuffs by Raccoon Mania. Before we get into chapter two, I would like to leave the warning that the author has provided. If you can't handle blood or violence, you may want to avoid this one. Now, on to chapter two. America waited, standing in the chilly air of Russia's territory, waiting for said Russian to open the door. Once unlocked and opened, Russia walked inside, continuing the silence that had been present during the entire walk to the house. America followed, and before he could take another step further, Russia stopped him and pointed at his worn-out and dirt-covered sneakers. America huffed, but obliged, and took off the sneakers with his feet, and nudged the footwear off to the side. Russia nodded and continued further along into his house, having taken off his shoes as well. America poked around, his eyes looking everywhere, absorbing in any information that he could, but what piqued his interest the most was the photos. They were everywhere. Photos of all of Russia's siblings, friends, which were very few, including only Germany, Switzerland, and North Korea, whom Russia tolerated, but only because he'd been taught to tolerate his allies. America, the occasionally clumsy bastard he is, accidentally bumped into a small table, almost knocking over a picture. Russia reacted quickly, grabbing the frame with its precious contents in it. He checked for any damage and placed the image back. Well, this is a surprise. Cold-hearted bitch Russia has objects with sentimental value, was the American's only remark, to which he earned a glare from Russia. America followed Russia, still taking every detail and storing it in his mind for future use. America was so distracted that he hadn't noticed when Russia had stopped walking. America crashed into Russia and flinched and fell backwards, prepared for his ass to meet the ground. The American opened his eyes in surprise when his arm, which was handcuffed, jerked up. Russia had pulled his cuffed arm a bit, just enough to stop the American from falling to the ground. Oh. Oh. Russia gave a forced smile to America and turned back to whatever it was he was doing. Unfortunately, America had to provoke Russia further. So you do care. And with that, Russia lifted America up as high as possible and let gravity take charge as he dropped him. America yelped and banged his head on a table stand. His eyes dimmed, his vision flickering, and fell unconscious. A small trickle of blood trailed off his forehead and dripped in tiny droplets, pooling on the ground around America's head. Russia only glanced at the sound and went back to the papers he was putting away. Russia suddenly did a double take and looked back and muttered a few colorful words in Russian. He lifted the American up, making sure the American was settled on his back and carried America piggyback style to the bathroom. Russia pulled out a few bandages and bandaged the other country's head. I do not want to be chained to a corpse, Russia muttered once his task was finished. Now, all Russia did was sit against the bathtub and wait for a few hours. Once awake, America blinked several times, his vision still blurry. He looked around and reached out his hands, searching for nothing in particular. His hands met a warm figure. America was cold, the chilly air of the bathroom making his skin freezing. So he followed his instincts and crawled towards the source of warmth and curled up against it. With the warmth and growing headache, 
America fell asleep. Russia had fallen asleep, bored, after an hour of waiting. He woke up two hours later with an object, no, person, clutching his arm and buried into his side. Russia frowned and shook the figure off. Mm, not now, Dad. Ten more minutes. Russia growled softly in annoyance and shook America more violently. No. Russia was now, yet again, pissed. So he reached for a bar of soap and chipped a piece off and turned back to America. Russia then pulled America's mouth open and slipped the soap inside. Said American thought it was food and chewed it a bit. The taste made his eyes open as quick as a flash. He coughed and spit into his hand, which he then wiped on his shirt. He turned around, his vision now much clearer than before. His eyes stopped on a certain Russian who wore a neutral expression. But if you looked closely, you could see the smugness in his eyes. Asshole! It is mutual, America, replied Russia. The two sat in suffocating silence. Russia suddenly got up. Well, then, I have a few movies you may find interesting enough to stay occupied for a few hours. With that, America got up, knowing better than to question what Russia meant by that. The two walked to Russia's basement, where Russia had a television, a small rug, and a sofa. A bit of litter weighed around. Remnants of when the Russians' younger siblings visited. America plopped down on the couch, and Russia was beside him. Russia pulled out his phone, put a pillow to act as a barrier between the two, and began working. Meanwhile, America used the remote to look through the few movies Russia had on the TV. Eventually... America settled for the movie Battle Royale and added the English subtitles. Russia looked up, remembering when Japan had shown him the movie. Russia was fairly certain she had gotten the movie from a rather suspicious library. Basically an illegal library where you can download a movie. But he had chosen not to question it. After all, if he made any objections to the movie and how Japan had obtained it, he would seem rather hypocritical. And that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed. And before I head out, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord. The link to wish is in the description. We have a lot of fun there. And um, I'd like to wish you have a great rest of your day, night, morning, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow.